Nika, have you fucking ditched? Have you ditched them? Oh my days. He's late. Look at this guy. Oh my god. Look at him. This motherfucker. <laughs> Welcome to the OSRs podcast where we talk about RuneScape related things. Every Sunday there's going to be a podcast out, so make sure you check your inbox on Sunday. I repeat, Sunday. I am Mint Mad Cow, one of your hosts, joined by the regular guys down below. What is going on guys? Rake C here. Welcome, welcome. And Rice Cup. So today we have two guests in our podcast, both competing in the PvP All-Stars we got Manked, the champion of the PvP All Stars, and we have Mika two seven nine. Also that guy known lost as to Mika. an Iron Man, right? Is that what happened? That got slayed yeah. by a hill giant. But, <laughs> you know that's okay. I was just so nervous. For my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, if I may, just quickly say this: so something I noticed uh, when I watched back the stream. For anybody that was watching the All Stars, every single person who was commentating butchered my name. Like, all right, how do you think you say my name, Mint, Rice Cup, and Manked, and uh, Mika? How do you actually think that you say my name? Just out of curiosity. Roxy. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Mika? Just By the way, are you going to play the video in the bag? Yeah, yeah, I, I will do it yeah. a second. But yeah, it's Rakesy, and oh my god, I was yeah, like... Rakesy. I was, I was hearing him, like, saying it as I was on the stage. I was like, man, they are literally butchering my name. Like, Dude, it sounds like Rikesy, little... though. I, I remember I called you Rikesy when we first did the podcast when they came I, out. Dude, it's <laughs> it's literally Rake C. And then yeah, just like, oh, Rake, to get Rake you know? C. Just one it's word. It's Rikesy, Rake and then you say it Rikesy. That's the thing. That's how I, it is. I said Rakasi, like, memeing. Like, it's Rakesy. <laughs> That's how you pronounce my name. Regardless, uh, let, let's move on. So, as you guys can tell... The podcast today is going to be all star themes pretty much the three of us here including myself uh all played recently in the tournament of the pvp all stars the first in history and it's really good actually because obviously there's three of us that competed and rice cup and mint mad cow you guys didn't so you guys basically watched it whereas we wow participated. Dude. wow well, flex I was more. A uh, flex I was more. A no, no, i'm just saying <laughs> it, it, it's good because yeah, you weren't invited bro Fucking hey exactly dude, i was a, i was a backup but i want to hear you know what it was like competing and also what it was like viewing so uh we're starting off <clears> with <throat> i think we start off with mika what was your experience like overall with all stars <laughs> I'll try not to meme you anymore, Mika. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, just, man. It's um, too much, man. I had a lot of fun, honestly. Like, for me, even if I went out the first round, just meeting everyone was just so awesome. Yeah. Um, but it was definitely nerve-wracking, though. Um, but yeah, for me, it was just cool. Just well, when everyone. Mammal killed you the first time, what was going through your head? Like, was that a, you're like, oh, that's a fluke. I can win this again. Or you're like, dude, Mammal's a god. I, nah, I, just, I, 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 I was just laughing, dude, because he got so many bolt hits on me. Like, <laughs> Like if 50 was 40. Oh, wise. now it's now it's the bolts problem. Okay, right. never mind. No, no, no. Like if you if you go and watch the fight, I mean he yeah, he, he caught me off play quite often. Like for oh, you want us to watch the fight? I, 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 we may as well. We're talking it. about it. Let Hold me we can watch the fight. <laughs> I, I really uh, like this copy pasta, by the way. And like <laughs> the, sad, the sad thing is, I don't know about Manked, but I didn't actually watch this fight. I was in the back room trying to get as much practice as possible in. <laughs> but like I watched this video a couple days ago. And I was like, oh my and fucking me too, me too. god. Do you have the second comment, Rakesy, on there? Do you have the second comment? I do, yeah. yeah that, oh, you do. Oh, just because it's got those <laughs> thumbs up, but yeah. Edit that shit and copy pasta his, man. Come on. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, let's uh, let's check this out. Yeah, there you there go. we go. Yep. All right, so you guys should be able to hear this now. Let's yeah. go. Mm hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God, not this fucking song. <laughs> 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 Yo, what is the beautiful people? Welcome back Yo, to a. Right, I've had enough of your. How do you end up making a twenty minute? Mika, how do you end up making a twenty minute video of your loss, dude? How does that work out? <laughs> two fights versus Perp, two fights versus MMORPG, two fights versus uh, Mammal, <laughs> and then three fights versus Dinner, basically. Oh, you yeah. okay? Yeah. So they they still did a lot of fights. Yeah. Right. So what about you, Manx? What did you think overall about All Stars? How do you think it went? It was good. It was very long. Yeah. Um, ah. It was awesome. As Mika said, awesome seeing everyone. It's That's like one of the highlights of RuneScape events. Um, but yeah, the event was sick. Concept was amazing. Hope they're doing more in the future. But 
yeah, spreading out over more days would be ideal because yeah. I think we ended up waking up at 9 a.m. and then my first fight was 8 p.m. Yeah. So we'd been awake for 11 hours before actually fighting oh, anyone. Oh, so yeah, because you were group four. That was long. Yeah, you were actually so, group after me. God damn, yeah. So it was I... a very long evening, but uh, it was good. It, it was a sick event, and I hope they do more because... I'm sure they've learned a few things from that tournament and it should be awesome in the future. Yeah. I heard they're going to split it up next time because that was my first thought when they were doing it. I'm like, wow, they're still doing all sorts. Like, yeah, they're going to finish it off the first day. Like, all the fights first day. was the overall tournament? Was it eight hours? I think it was yeah. nine. I think, nine hours? I think it was nine, nine hours. I can check real quick. How long is this? Nine hours and nine 54 hours. minutes. Ten hours. Just intense it was, hybriding. It was 10 if hours. If you've ever yeah. braided, that is yeah. mind-numbing. Yeah. How do you... Yeah. How do you prepare for that mentally? Nine hours of breeding. Like, I would have just lost it at four hours in. Uh, well, I mean, if you think about it, it's like there's four groups. So, so what is that? It's like two hours per group overall. Yeah, you just got to wait. But oh, then whoever, whoever like survives, you know, the brackets, they, they get to do, they get to go on for longer. Though. Yeah. So the way I did it was when I was waiting for the first, two groups i was just watching which was really fun and then huh. when group three was playing i practiced then and then uh whenever i got a chance i'd just go outside and just get some fresh air and then eat and i just cool down just send out i yeah. i was literally yeah. the same aside from i was filling my lungs with my vape juice <laughs> also you guys may have noticed i'm not smoking it because i left my charger for it in the oh. hotel so i'm not oh. i'm, I'm vape free right. for free that's days, not a clap thing Three days. Wow. I'll be about the clap. Oh, oh fully no withdrawal symptoms, Kappa. I mean, I've been really, I've been really moody the last two days. I'll be honest. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Uh -oh. But I'm feeling better. I'm not waking up in the morning and like coughing my guts up. So, yeah. It's, it's I feel good. young again. Right. Anyways, uh, so as a, uh, what's the words? As a competitor. Not a comp. What's the other one? You know when you hybrid or a viewer as, as a viewer Walking. yeah how, oh. how did you guys how did you guys find the tournament like what did you guys think of it all right man you go first well rice actually watched the majority of it i only caught a couple fights i heard that in between fights was kind of long and to be honest from some of the other tournaments uh demo mode and pvps and stuff they kind of have that thing where they don't show action the whole time and the commentary is really good but if you see any other tournaments especially like overwatch they, they have shit going on all the time like stats are showing uh players if they're not in between games so i'm thinking next time you know spread out a couple more days and uh, kind of fill in the gaps but overall it looked like an amazing turnout yeah okay what about you Bree? because uh, that, that, okay. that's coming from a pvp or uh, a pkers yeah. perspective so as a skiller slash pvmer i want to know what you thought of it i mean i i enjoy the fight a lot because the fights a lot because most of the people that are competing are people that you know we're all know to an extent so it was kind of like related to you watching your favorite sports team right you know like you got your favorite players and you want them to win yeah. so you, you have that emotional investment as a viewer so it was like really cool to see which one of your favorites could like actually get there and yeah i'll, I'll add on to like the whole commentating part like the content was good you know but for there there were a lot of like those long breaks at a, yeah. like every, every between every fight yeah <clears throat> and and like that was probably the only the only real issue is like the long long breaks but i'm not exactly sure how they could fix that but um i mean the fights though were good though because you know once it gets going, a little bit in between jump, banter jump in, or man. something I've, i saw I've that got finger raise yeah. go for it man i've, here. I've got a uh, way like so the first fight they start that and then while the first fight's going the second second pair they gear and then as soon as that fight ends, they go to the second fight, and then they do that. And while that's going on, the first group they gear, yeah. and they just keep on doing it like that. And it's constant action. Yeah. Yeah. They just so need somebody going work. in between and telling them what's up. So somebody just yeah. That would, that yeah. Would because work. because what ended up happening was that a lot of those fights you didn't actually get to see live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I because they I heard were just, they didn't show every fight. Yeah, they were queuing it up, right? So yeah. so like the ones that sold the most, like the ones that were uh, obviously the the most viewer potential like the bigger names they would play that one but then like some of the other ones are in the more in the background they, they wouldn't play that right yeah and that's what i heard people are getting angry about in red but they should order it a bit better so that um you know when a fight is done you can you can still watch the next fight type of thing, right yeah instead of just like 10 minutes of commentary and and then there's nothing else in the background because i feel like 
they should they should still at least show as much of it as possible yep i yeah. to be honest with you like <clears throat> it seems as this, is, this was the first time they've done the all-stars i feel like it was a big success uh obviously people really enjoyed it I, i've not heard anybody really say much negative about it and people have said that they were on the edge of their seats for a lot of it which is awesome sick ko by the way mika holy shit thank you um <laughs> but like you said yeah i think if they were to make it into like a two-day event and they were a little bit more prepared because bearing in mind you guys won't know this there were only eight computers in the entire building that we had access yeah. to and there were 16 of us do you know what I mean? Oof. So it was it, like half of us couldn't be on computers and obviously four of those computers were on the stage. Uh, so it was really difficult to be able to A, practice and B, get everything ready. Like they needed more computers there. I'll say that. It would have been a lot less uh, like sloppy in terms of time between the fights, I think, if there were more computers and yeah. there was more direction as in like, guys, you need to go and gear up for your fight go and do it on those computers there because we were basically given like a hard drive and all of our gear and stats was saved onto that hard drive so then when we'd go onto the main stage uh we'd use those computers and put the hard drive in so everything's pre-saved so what like the hell a hard drive for items and gear wait slow down like no, explain like, a f- me- the, like a file right you're talking about like it, it, was, it was an we ssd would... yeah it was like a save file your character. For, so that connected directly to runescape servers and gave you items dude well no, so it's like it was like your own profile on your pc and then it saved your twitch settings yeah. uh and stuff like that oh oh yeah everything was saved you'd log straight into the uh the private worlds and obviously you could gear before going on the stage but not many people did so when people got onto the stage they effectively geared there and then which can take like a couple of minutes and then obviously the commentators are up there they've not been told that they're good to go so they just have to keep talking about random stuff until the pk is yeah yeah that's that's the skill part of Dude, this pure breeding content. fight that's going on right now oh my god i'm getting moist over here that looks so fun dude i i love this tournament what you, man like it, no, really, the, it relit the p the pvp inside of me like kind of it got relit that fire man yeah i really like the uh the, the arena and stuff you know it it's nice they got like the squares and the outlines going so you know exactly where the squares are yeah and like the yeah. overall design is nice for them hosting it for the first time this way they really they really did well yeah, yeah like, i think overall I, I think overall they've learned a lot from them and most stuff probably yeah their attorneys yeah. are just getting better because uh, yeah. it's just a you know none of these guys have ever run attorney before and they're trying to hire people and figure it out and to be honest it's looking pretty good how many viewers are on the uh podcast or not the podcast <laughs> The, the stream, stream for it this. peaked yeah, at like, like 60k when Bully was around. Holy shit! Yeah, that's like just just for that one channel, yeah. Right just for <laughs> just for the old school channels, like. Okay. That's not like how many? How much? What's the most we peak for Deadman mode in those tours? That's that's not not higher than that. No, I think yeah, it's like, like a, 80 before. It was like 80. Wasn't wasn't 80? the first time though? I think we got hosted at Twitch, right? No, Twitch. I think it was the second time, right? But the thing is, like, you got to remember, it was a 10-hour event. So yeah. I think we had 50 for, like, the majority of it, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, it was 45-50 yeah. yeah. for even when body wasn't, like, so. I, I'm so glad that it did well. Like, I really yeah. am. And, like, I can understand when people say they were on the edge of their seats for the fights. Like, I love that. <laughs> and it's true. Like, as, like, obviously, we were competing, but there was downtime for us to, like, view the fights and stuff. And it was thoroughly entertaining to just sit there and be able to watch your friends battle out like because no, nobody knew what's gonna happen there was so many like factors to it such as like stage fright and stuff like that and i don't know i, I fucking love who would have stage so fright nice. here's a who good question stage fright? Uh, dude, i had Mika. stage fright everybody apart from manx by who, the sounds who of had it, the like... worst stage fright who had the worst stage fright Me. on on yeah. there <laughs> was it mika yeah. Ian, oh, Ian. Poor, I heard Ian was trying so fright. hard, man. Yeah, I had a pretty bad stage fright just because I'm not comfortable being in front of cameras in general. So I was yeah. pretty fucked there, but Dude, yeah, you're. I, I, I would mean, be fucked one, too, to be uh, honest. Like, like in the middle of a fight, though, I guess I would kind of relax. But outside of that, I was always nervous. Like before interview, before the fights, all the time. So really, like you wait, can wait, you can tell. In... Were you nervous? Yeah, I, I was telling nervous? everyone that I wasn't, but I was nervous as fuck, dude. I oh, was man, so dude. Much nervous. I, I was I, like, <clears throat> sorry, keep going, keep going, keep going. No, nah, go for it, go for it. I was going to say, I was like the opposite. I didn't, I, I'd rather have not been interviewed because it was just one more thing to think about. But like, once I was on the stage, 
it took me like i i fought torvesta first first two fights i was doing shockingly bad i won the first one lost the second one hands were shaking like just messing up completely um but by the end of it when uh chris archie came around like i just didn't give a shit i was just like talk to i'll talk absolute bollocks to this camera right now don't care i'm happy to have done what i did uh but no, I, I, I got really bad stage fright for this. This is the first time I ever played on stage. And it wasn't like, in my head, it wasn't like the crowd of people. It wasn't, it wasn't the people who were watching or anything like that. Cause I made sure not to pay attention to like how many people were viewing the stream. I think it was just, um, it was just like the pressure of looking bad for the sake of looking yeah. bad. Like that's, that would for me, me that's all it was. Yeah. It you was, have a lot of pride, you know? In a in a Dude. way, although I don't feel like people expected anything, but I expected a lot from myself. It's probably the easiest way to explain it for me. Did you see any foreheads when you uh, when you died on stream? If you checked it, because if I was on there, I'd be getting foreheads even if I won. I could just that Twitch chat. Uh, right? No, they were mostly oh. pog champs. They were uh, mostly pog. Champs. Dude, I saw That's a good. lot of I saw a lot of RNG whenever when I was fighting Torvesta. Because uh, the way that YouTube works and like with popularity, it, it kind of seems like the bigger the following you have and like you know the bigger fan base you have, people are more likely to support you. So when I was yeah. fighting Torvesta and I beat him everybody put it down to rng that's all i saw in the chat it was like rng <laughs> rng rng <laughs> and, I, and you is... won that fight too really yeah. hard I you won that. clean I, though man i, I, I saw did it. but apparently rng but it was funny because the fervor i got in the tournament the rng started to disappear it went from rngs to like rexy win and stuff like that because <laughs> people didn't people were upset at the fact that i beat c engineer i know they were uh, I, I polled on my own YouTube saying, who do you think is going to win out of me, C and me and C Engineer? I had like 30%. He had 70 That was on Wait, my what? own YouTube channel. Do you know what I mean? Like they had no faith in me whatsoever. And you slayed C Engineer, didn't you? Did like, you? That was a pretty... Um, uh, I, I, I think it was thought... like even. It was 1-1 one, one and then... No, it was yeah, very close, I thought he, yeah. I thought he I two owed it. I wouldn't no, say... No, no, no. no I, wouldn't oh, say, I definitely bad, didn't bad. slay him. The fight's actually here. Uh, huh. uh, this was the most nervous I was. Uh, My hands only one who got like huh? getting in. Yeah. Th this this was honestly the worst fight I'd ever had. Uh, you guys can't see it during the fight, but basically this mouse right here, it had. This is the mouse I was using. I got uh, sensitivity buttons here on the side and one oh, on the top. No. And um, I was shake. I was shaking. Accidentally hit one. My mouse was like shooting all over the screen. I uh, I froze it. I froze him. Stood underneath him. And I took both hands off the keyboard and was like this, like trying to get the sensitivity down. So I was, I was planking left, right, and center in this fight. It was, it was honestly terrifying. That's pretty uh, great. Yeah, it, it wasn't good. And also in the second fight, in the pure fight, I got shot on. Like, I, I don't know if uh, Miko and Mank remember the pure fight I had against the engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got fucked up. He specs me 30-30 twice with DDS. <laughs> Yeah, um, like look at the amount of food he's got left compared to me. I I don't even remember that fight. I I effectively blacked out to be honest. Um, not very impressive. And then in the final fight, in the Zerker fight, they make me look really bad, and I find it kind of funny because I, I I feel like I did really good in the Zerker fight, but. The thing to remember is you guys won't know this, but C Engineer was trying to get into my head the entire day before this, and he was making it very apparently loud, saying that he was gonna beat me and he wasn't nervous. And like, you know, he was trying to get inside of my head. So I knew that I had him. And as you'll see in this fight here, I poke him twice with a DDS. That wasn't me misclicking, that was me trying to BM him. I was trying to finish him with a DDS poke. And like it's pretty much all you see from this fight is like right here, me DDS poking him once. <laughs> is so, yeah. oh is there God. some bad blood in between you now, or is that just no, memes? I, I, no, I feel like I feel like to begin with. Oh, what is that? Po possibly. <laughs> that I, was, I, I, I think I think to begin with, yes. Uh, <laughs> like I, I don't really know why to be honest, because like if I lost to the engineer, I would have just been like, hey man, you know, fair enough, fair play. But I think he just really wanted to win, and so did I. Yeah, he was desperate. Yeah. yeah so I, I, you can invite also, him for next podcast, then. Invite him for I, next I'm, ha podcast. I'm happy Sorry. to have him on. But that, that's the thing. Like after it, we didn't really speak very much. It was a little bit awkward, like that entire day. And then when I, we actually started to compete in the tournament, when I started to win my fights, 
uh he started talking to me and he was like you're doing so well man and we just kind of like bonded again through that if that makes sense but i wouldn't say yeah. no there's no bad blood or anything okay. like that uh, i think it you guys good. resolved it you know yeah yeah i would have been surprised because he seems pretty chill i'd have been like whoa that's weird yeah right. but like i think it just came down to the fact that we both really wanted it you know like i i really yeah, wanted it he clearly also really wanted it like i felt bad like in, in a way i felt kind of bad because obviously he came all the way from sweden to, to potentially fight on the stage and i would say without a doubt he has way more influence pull on youtube than i do or on social medias so realistically as like a business move it was way smarter to have him on the stage than it was me um but at the end of the day i feel like the fact they put it down to the best hybrid wins just kind of makes sense in this environment when it's a pvp tournament <clears throat> so. and they didn't have any bonus prizes right throughout the tourney because it'd have been cool they... to see mvp prize or yeah, like they didn't fight. do those title prizes. I mean, MVP yeah. would obviously be manked anyways, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be yeah, honest, yeah, it's yeah, zero, it's by the way. Yeah. They, wouldn't, they would have gave you uh, MVP, Mika. Come on, man. <laughs> For what? <laughs> no, <laughs> For uh, <laughs> entertainment, dude. That, yeah, that, 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 that. This is like another issue, though. I think MVP should have been uh, Foe, because he brought DH against me in our 70 defense fight. But what the fuck you guys, I? you guys didn't see that because they didn't, uh, they didn't stream it. They just put. The oh, replay. they cooked you, huh? They cooked you. Yeah, well, well, they, I didn't even know. I didn't. Even... So, but but yeah, you know, that sucks. It, it is what it is. You know. Oh well. How'd they you... can learn from their mistakes, hopefully, in the next one. Um, oh, I have a good one. I have a good question. So you you know how this is a PVP All Star, and not necessarily the most skilled PVPers oh, yeah. fighting each other. So like, how did you? F uh, did you guys competing obviously notice like the big difference in player skill among you guys like you know pvp wise um... for me i my group was pretty good so my group was pretty stacked so i didn't really notice it as much um so yeah i'd say everyone that i thought was at a, at a decent level so i don't know did you but ever feel unconfident in a fight though mate i mean you no. won all of them I was yeah you spanked everybody yeah. dude I Always wish... very confident. Damn, bro. Some I burst. wish I yeah. got a chance to fight against you, man. So, yeah. I... well, well, let's set it up right now, dude. Two turn yeah. worlds. Come we... on, bro. My, in my YouTube <laughs> comments, people are asking for it. I think we are going to have to have like a best of five hybrid fights just to see maybe what would have happened on stage yeah. if we would have got through. Whoever wins, I'll sponsor next tourney, like I was saying, dude. I'll just get you a Mimic Cow t-shirt, you wear it up there. Mika's already owed me. I'm going to send it up there. Yeah, yeah, there. no, Mika. Well, what about I'll you? I'll buy him a pizza, so. Well, for me um wait what was the question again sorry I like did you notice the apparent skill difference between like i mean you know, the skill difference the skill difference is was definitely there but people that were considered really bad definitely put in the practice and got a little <laughs> bit better than just bad okay a little bit better <laughs> <laughs> okay like well, a little bit uh, no like, names right no names <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to say it in a nice way right but hey man, be, I, it's there, there fine, was definitely you know. pe people that were good and people that were bad um and you could see it which one did or you lose as, to i, you lose to I, I was i was i was literally <laughs> shit. like i wasn't good i know that um <laughs> If it's I'm fun. on my home setup, I feel like. Yeah, Mika, you're always so better. composed, man, at home. But I guess on the stage, Dude, it's just. It, it's, yeah. a uh, it's a different. You're out of your course. element. Yeah, it's your, uh, you're out of your element. Yeah. Like, Manx, the, a serious question for you. Like, do you actually not get stage fright, like, at all at this point? Like, first, nothing? Or do you feel it a little bit? So, first fight against Skiddler, yes. Because um, he started doing fakies, and my mind wasn't kind of in the zone at that time. So I was like, oh, God. Yeah. Um, and then, then I started to think about what I was doing, and then it was fine. I don't really get like shaky or anything like people say. My heart was going though, yeah. so it's just my heart. But everything else was chill, so it's fine. Yeah, it's same for me. Like my heart was racing. Like I, I have, you can see the my point of view right from my clicks. My clicks were there, but then when I look at it, I was <laughs> camping melee prey like a retard for like. Every single fight, I was just camping melee prey. And now looking back at it, I'm there like, wait, why did I not change my prayers, for example? Yeah. Yeah. But it's all in the end, it's all nerves. Like in yeah. when I was on stage, I thought I was doing everything correctly. Um, for example, versus Mammal, he was literally just bolting me. And obviously <laughs> me, all I need to do is put the rage prey up. But no, I'm putting mage prays up, melee prays up, everything but rage prays. Like I was just doing so many mistakes, but yeah. It's yeah, all because of nerves. If you like, yeah, would you for me? Would you uh, get 
used to it if you were on stage more often. Oh yeah, deal. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Like uh -huh. if I was, awesome. if I had more stage time in general, like uh, or for example, just the best of five versus data reader or something like that, I would get into it because the first fight that I won, which is random, I, I was the most nervous, and then the second two that I completely lost, I was not that nervous. But if you have more time, you get into it. It's like at the start, it, you're nervous, and then you get more relaxed for a while. You just need to host it, dude. You need to do what uh, Chris Archie does. Just go around and start interviewing people. There you go. Get rid of the nerves. <laughs> oh, I'm playing it, dude. Just host it one time. See what happens. I watch. No, no. I love playing, dude. Playing is fun. I, I think uh, nerves probably played the biggest uh, part in this. Like, I, I don't know if you guys saw the interview. Uh, after the first fights I had with Ditter and Torvesta, like I literally, as soon as I came out of the fight with uh, Ditter and I beat him, I, I literally turned to him and I was like, I was like, both of you are way better than how you just fought. I just said, you're obviously just as nervous as we all are. Like they were nervous. And like, you can tell when somebody's nervous when you're yeah. fighting them because they do stuff, which is, that it's like they go back to like textbook hybriding, which is great and all, but if you want to win a fight, it's so predictable it's not like the best way to do it and like i i said to both of them i said like you guys are better than how you just fought me you guys are clearly both just nervous wrecks right now and they're like yeah we're pretty nervous so i i'd say yeah. that that plays a big part i'll be honest if it wasn't for the fight that i had against the engineer the day before i don't think i would have done as well because having that fight on the stage gave me the like the nerves and I had a dose of what it was going to feel like. So I knew what was going to come, you know? Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> now, I, yeah. I got a question for the um, people in the tourney. <clears throat> what was your hardest fight? What was your easiest fight? You know, throw somebody under the bus for that one. Let's hear it. Let's, what we got <laughs> oh, going on? Yeah, oh, yeah, let's fight, go. I think was actually perp. Like both of my two perp fights... Like, I, I, I won the pure one with, like, 4 HP. But my main one, I think I KO'd him or something like that. It was super close. Both fi both fights were super close. I actually got lucky against him. I didn't think Perp would be that good in the tourney, to be honest. Like, I like him as a content creator, and he's decent at PKing. But I didn't think he'd be... Uh, a lot of people were scared to fight him. I was like, whoa, dude. Because there's a lot of competitors out there. I mean, I wasn't good? necessarily scared, but I just heard people saying that he's pretty good so i just went with the flow and believed them that's that what i good. heard yeah. yeah and that's pretty much it so when i when i fought against him i was like super happy you know i beat him and then the next fight was mr mammal and i actually disrespected <laughs> him i disrespected <laughs> him too much yeah. I, funny, I, I genuinely feel bad for it how did you disrespect I, him i didn't I like didn't i took someone. fucking I, I literally took the like the gear that i wouldn't take like i took like crystal shield torak like just the anti rage gear Straight oh, up, everything dude. I could. Oh, the meme gear, and bro. Then, and then I splashed everything. Out there. Wait, I, why am I splashing everything? Hold up. Yeah, dude. Bonus yo, is Mika like, got cocky because he defeated Perp. He's like, yo, Mammal, I'm sorry, man. Like, get, get <laughs> out of here. It's like, oh, I lost. It's like, oh. Yeah, Behind the scenes, room. dude. Now we yeah. know. Now well, we know. How about you, Mank? It's hardest and the easiest fight you has. I mean, the... I yeah, think be, they were be honest, man. We're all friends. It's okay. We're all friends. We all know like, so, we're all mates. It's fine. Well, you, you know how you said about Ditter not performing how you thought oh, he would Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was true for me as well. Because after the fights, he said, oh, that's the best I've ever PK'd. And I was stood there like, he's just being humble. Like, there's, he, I know he's, he's better than what he did on that stage. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, but for, like, everyone, honestly... They were all like everyone had their own good like unique things about them, so it was never like oh I can go into this fight thinking oh this is easy. Um, they're all like di relatively difficult, you know. Everyone had their di a different unique. Well, let me rephrase them. the question then. You ever fight somebody and go oh it's going better than I thought? You know, like this is this is you know I thought oh, they practiced to the point yeah. where it wouldn't be so one sided, but you're just like yeah. Oh, who did you overestimate oh. and who did you underestimate? Yeah. I didn't underestimate anyone uh, or overestimate oh. anyone, I guess, because basically I was practicing with Psych and he literally said to me, it's impossible for you to lose against Ditta. And I was just like, well, if it's impossible to lose against Ditta, I'm pretty confident fighting everyone else. So I just went in there thinking I can beat everyone. Um, but yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's a good mindset. So you, you psychologically like convince yourself. Yeah, I got this. I was hoping for more juice, yeah. but that is the mind of a winner, so you can't argue oh, that. Yo, that, that's a good question. So you said something about everybody had something unique about their style, 
Yeah. So what were like you know um, amongst the people that you guys saw fighting or you fought, mm -hmm. like what were some of the unique styles that? The, were there the any hidden methods? Had? Yeah. Well, yeah, because like I know Bodhi was like he brought an SGS and like a freaking <laughs> dragon, oh my God, stuff those... like that. Like you know, <laughs> yeah. for those type of examples, you know, what do you Not have any observation? So, for example, for Skid, like, because my first fight wasn't too sure how he was gonna fight. I know from fighting him before the tournament, I did the complete opposite of what I actually did in the tournament. So I think he had a pretty full sense of security in that sense. So. Um, I kind of knew how he fought, I guess. Um, and then framed. I didn't know how it was going to go, uh, but I think, I don't, know, I don't want to be mean, but it was kind of like, he was kind of predictable. Like, for, framed? For, yeah. When I'm fighting people, you're either a predictable peeker or a just like, I have no idea what you're going to do. Um, but I always try and predict people rather than like react to people. So framed, yeah. he is good. And that's bad for him because it means I know kind of what he's going to do. It's just like a certain type of peeking. I don't understand how to explain it, but yeah. no, I so, agree. Yeah. I, I peek to the point where you kind of see what's coming on, and then you, they have a pattern, yeah. right? But, so yeah, like, yeah, Mika's yeah. is you just range fakey. That's his pattern. Oh, it's yeah. gonna mage? No, it's rage. Yeah, uh, that's that's really... rage. you're trolling. Rage. That, that's all. Dude, I, never, that's all I, I did in my fights. Who, oh, dude, every yeah. time I fight you, Mika. Who won a tourney? Who won in the tourney world, Mika? When you were streaming, dude. Oh. What do you mean? <laughs> Come on, oh, dude. Right I'll yeah. tell you this, Boy, man. Playing you on the go stage right now? compared Stay to playing in the tourney world, two dude, different let's fields, do it. man. Let's do it. I'll beat yeah. those cheeks again, dude. <laughs> um, and then what's it? Okay, so Booty. I think he made he like he loved his mage and melee for some reason. I don't know why, but he probably bolted me like three times. So I was kind of just more aware of that. So. I'd basically just flick between mage and raid, uh, mage and melee. Skill specs did very well, and he kept his distance, which was quite annoying, and I wasn't expecting it. And then he just kept on hitting me pretty hard through prayer, I think. So it's kind of whatever. Um, and then Boti, when I fought him again, he it's a good thing having like unique strategies. But then because I practiced one strategy and went with that one, I think I was really good at that one. And if you're doing multiple, you might not be as good at those strategies. So I think it's kind of Better yeah, just to practice one strategy rather than like seven or something. Jack um, of all like trades, of master of none. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, for example, his ballista one. If I'm DDing you, you do not want to have a ballista because you're you're just gonna get destroyed. no shield. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. It like you can't really hit back because typically when you're getting DD, you just bolt back and just get some free damage. But if you've got a ballista, you, it's game over. Yeah. Uh, and then and then Ditter finally. Um. He, he loves his fakies to barrage, and I, I can't remember what Ian said about Boaty, but I told Ian, like, yo, this is how you beat Boaty, and then I think he leaked it. I think he leaked uh, what he said to him at some point um, on the stream, and I, I can't remember. I, I haven't seen that clip, but, dude, yeah. I remember giving Mika, like, the best advice I could to beat Ditter Bitter in that, uh, not, not the semi-final, the one before that. And then I watched the fight, and I was just sat next to Adam Boaty, and I was like, he's not doing anything I told him to do. Wait, what, <laughs> what do you mean? Well, all what right. You... <laughs> what, what I said to you, I said, I said, when I beat him, I said, like, put it this way. I spoke to Adam afterwards, and in eight eight of the fights that I fought against Ditter Bitter, he did not pick up on my strategy in a single fight. My strategy was this. I'd switch to Mage, and then I'd one-tick bolt them. And that's what I did over and over and over that's again to Mika's every single strat. person. What do you mean? He always does it. You didn't nah, do that in the tourney, bro? He copyrighted it, man. That, that's, literally, that's literally all I, I did. That was all I did to get into fourth place. I just pretended yeah. I was going to mage and then bolted them. That, the that way I it. do it is I have staff on and then I see what they're praying and then I hit them with the other shit. But... So the one where you actually like have to like practice that? Because that whole staff on thing is... It takes yeah, it's very fast reaction time. Very yeah. fast reaction. Yeah. yeah. No, well, that, that's what I like to you, do, but on stage I wasn't bamboo. doing. You go for the DMM DD pussy bullshit. I hate that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I hate yeah. it so much. How I hate to tell people about the one day prior when we practiced on stage. Hey, man, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I mean, if it if it works for you, it works for you. But mm. I would choose like being on the other side and seeing what my opponent is doing any day of the week than that DD yeah. stuff. I'm not a fan of it. I'd rather fight like a man than a wimp. That's how <laughs> I see it. 
Damn, with, the bro. Ding, with the ding, you can really mess yourself up because you might just end up getting everything wrong and they might just do more damage than you when you're DDing them. It's really annoying sometimes. Yeah. So it, it has its perks, but then also you can get destroyed by RNG. Um, well, so, yeah. During a, during a Denimo tourney, I would watch Mika and he'd do really well with the sidestep under because if you just walk right under, like um, a horizontal instead of vertically, I'm guessing, I don't know which one is which. Uh, they yeah. can't really <laughs> melee you, so you get that extra tick in on them. Yeah, and uh, Mika was doing that perfectly. I don't know if he did that during the All Stars, but during that, that was that, that was, was mainly because people were in Varax and sufferings. So in order there to beat that, you don't give them a chance to melee you, so they can just bolt you. Yeah. And then you try to, let's say, step out diagonally, mm -hmm. and then hope that they're praying range. You have range on, and then you try to blood barrage basically the suffering damage exactly that's the and way you're you down this, right? oh, and that's what i did and that's how i beat like three people with sufferings that one tourney yeah, you should have you should have done that this tourney dude to be and honest then i wanted to i wanted to pick it up but it didn't keep the recalls and shit so i st stayed with my sears um, yeah. ah. mika you've improved like over the last year you've improved like an insane amount i do have to say like Mika's it, always PK, dude. It's not just been a year. No, He's I know, always... but I'm saying I remember fighting Mika like a year ago compared to like the other day at this tournament. Like Mika's got really fucking good. I couldn't beat him on 70 defense. Like backstage, I don't think I beat him a single time. Like he just fucked me with a DD in. Like... The thing the thing is backstage I wasn't nervous at all. And even one day prior when we stayed in and practiced when everyone went to hotel already, you remember? Yeah. Like those fights that we had. Like, oh yeah, that you fucking yeah. destroyed me in those fights. Yep. Yep. Like, you actually dipped me, like, every single one. Ooh. Honestly, yeah. like, that's, I, I, I guess, like, for me, I've just, I've, I've never made it to the, uh, the final stage in that Mo tournament, so I've never had to deal with the, the DD and shit, and in terms of, like, hybriding, I've only ever hybrided when I can see my opponent, and we both have a chance to attack each other without any of the stalling, dd and hugging stuff, um... So yeah, you you next turn, well. you're just gonna get DD'd. You just, you <laughs> well, just gave away your secret. If, 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 if I'm an attorney, if you DD'd you, I mean, uh, you're allowed to do it. So <laughs> I mean, I mean, everybody yeah. did it. Like everyone did it. It's just some people were better than others. Like Mika's perfected DD, and I'd say because like that's like how he fights. It's his style of fighting. You know, it's one of those. Yeah, but things. I think I, I the think DD I Mika. went. Uh, I think I went the wrong way by choosing my plus ones and shit. Because yeah. if I PK like that, I need to take Kodai. Like, just looking back at it, it's dumb that I even ever Yeah, dude, the Kodai is insane, dude. The Extra reason why damage. I cons... I thought the Armor Bow was better for DPS. The reason why I considered ACB is because I was considering the nerves, and I was like, yeah, I'm probably going to be yeah. too nervous to do what I want to do. It but you might but when I was Kodai. actually there, if you look my fights, I mage so much more than I range, which makes no sense when I'm taking ACB, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, I think I just went against myself as well. So yeah. if I if I had another chance, I would change a lot of things around for sure. Yep. I you mean, will, you will. For, so. for me, the reason I didn't take the Kodai, it, there's two reasons. One being that I've never PK'd with it. I did, like, as soon as you see like Manked and Ditter using it, it's, you know, it's a bit of a sign that it is better than any other plus one because these guys put in a lot of thought and practice. Uh, but I hadn't used the item. Like I've never PK'd with it. And secondly... I was so rusty. Like, when, when I said that I only had five hours of practice going into this, I'm talking Monday and Tuesday, three hours on Monday, two hours on Tuesday. That's all the practice I got. And there's no, like, I, I can't remember how to one tick barrage. Like, I don't know if I've ever done it, to be honest. So there was no point in me taking a Kodai. I knew that my best bet was to take the crossbow. It had a spec bar. And also I could do a lot of damage with range. You know? Yeah, I saw your ACB spec a few times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that, that made me laugh, man, because... Right, was so, that not part of the plan, or was no, that a no, misclick? All right, in the tournament, every single ACB spec, and I swear on my life, every ACB spec in the tournament, I intentionally did. Whether or not it meant that I won the fight or lost the fight, because I think there was one or two times when I probably should have DDS instead of ACB. Yeah. Every single one that. was intentional. Um, But it was funny, because Aiza and, and Ian were talking on the... Uh, uh, the, the microphones <laughs> hey man i i can say his name however i want dude what's your mind uh they, they were talking and they were like oh no he's done it he's specced with the acp again I, every time my acb spec was intentional every time the only time my acb spec and it wasn't 
was the day before against the engineer i acb spec him on accident and it was like surround sound in the entire building <laughs> and it was just a massive re like it was terrifying yeah. that's so, funny you know how what... bm would it be to bring like a dragon harpoon and spec with that midway oh my god <clears throat> I, I should amazing. have I should have taken an archer's ring, but I wanted the like if it got up close and personal, which is basically everybody's strategy in the tourney, which was DDN. I wanted to be able to out DPS them or at least deal out some good DPS with a whip. So I decided to go with a B ring, but in hindsight, maybe the uh, the archer's ring would have been a better choice. Yeah, I me. think Sears ring is just the best because of the mage defense as well. Yeah, I don't like, think I'm archers not... and berserker maybe. Like, I, I don't think they're the way to go though it, it just Yo, depends you... what you're going for like for me i was dps more... or ko yeah for me i was just going for yeah. dps and damage over time i wasn't worried about ko potential i was just more like focused on outlasting Outlast, yeah. and whatever they were doing i tried to like i tried to counteract whatever they were doing effectively and just trying to stay a step ahead um i think one of the hardest fights i had to be honest with you was I, I think it's really difficult because Torvesta was like unpredictable in a weird way. Like I was trying to fake him out and I was trying to get him to pray mage and he just wouldn't do it. Uh, and I don't know if that was because he was nervous and he just like, you know, he wasn't with it when it came to the clicks or if because he knew what I was trying to do. So that was, that was like really difficult to be able to counteract that. I had to try to one tick the barrage, which was absolutely disgusting. Like you're looking at like a six tick barrage and I'm there like, oh my <laughs> God. God. Actually, but then I hit a 30 and I was like, okay, it was worth it because he just stayed on prey range the entire time. Um, I think foe, I think it goes without saying, like he, he, he was on a plane for like two days. He got there that day off the plane. So he was jet lagged, hadn't practiced oh, in three days uh I'd, I'd say foe was the easiest to fight and that's no disrespect to him i think you know that's just that's just how it is that's the truth of it he i was gonna ask if he surprised you but apparently <laughs> it um, feels bad it 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 was it, everything was kind of predictable to be honest with you okay I, i'll yeah. be completely honest and i, I, I have Poe, mad but... respect for the guy i really do and yeah. i spoke to him afterwards and stuff um but i don't know I'd probably say Ditter because Ditter was the only person that I actually properly lost to. Um, and I, I don't know exactly what it was. I, I feel like, I, I just feel like I wish I had more time to practice for yeah. this tournament. And I think I would have done so much better, to be honest. Well, you created a name for yourself again. So I'm sure next turn you should do a lot better because I'm, yeah, I'm guessing they, they're going to yeah, invite, invite you. Yeah. Now, speaking of future all star tourneys or any tourneys with PvP, we talked about this maint. Uh, about our idea where we can PK at the dual arena for like certain rank and or EH not or necessarily dual What's arena the, but but like well, some customized somewhere. matchmaking system I'm sure it would be yep. at the dual arena though are we talking and, about an ELO uh, system ELO yeah, system yeah the ELO there we system go. Yeah. Yeah. cuz we talked about last time Amika I don't know if you watched that podcast the quality was a little weird on the audio hey uh, come but... on. <laughs> dude, hey it's hard it but Pretty much for the future of All Stars, we kind of brought up the idea that you could fight people, certain gear, certain combat. Uh, you know, you're wearing the same thing, and you'll fight for Elo. And the higher you get up, you know, you can get in there. And then when they do another tourney, they'll just pick like the top Elo people and throw it together. Now, Mika, what do you what do you think about that idea? All right, so I actually think that's a that's a sick idea, and I talked with Stone and Swin about it. It is oh, you know, oh, it a little bit good. differently though. Well, uh, they get that idea but from let's us? say. Wait, no, I, I don't know. Like, I, we were just talking about it at the dinner. Ah, when yeah, I okay, never mind, sorry. What were the differences? Or whatever. But basically, wait, first of all, right, if we, you just build from what we have right now, one defense, 45 defense, and 70 defense, and let's say you want to make an ELO system out of it, um, you, you can just build on that. Let's say people need to fight in all three brackets, so you actually don't just force people to just fight one bracket, or you force people to fight one bracket, right? It's either one or two. You need to decide what you want to push forward. Because if you want to push forward, let's say you're going to take the best people from the, for the tournament, then you're going to have to have people fighting one defense, 45 defense, and 70 defense. Yeah. Um, and Well, they could just do a queue like League where you just go, I want a 45 defense, but if I right, can't so put a fight soon enough, no problem. Yeah, basically, when they were talking about that, what they want to do is make it so it is throughout all the worlds. No matter what world you're in, you can okay. queue up, and then you can do whatever you want. And once your match is ready, 
you basically well, have a fight. That this is, is the, the I, future. That is the this idea. Is it wasn't future, meant. Baby. It wasn't meant to be like a dual arena thing. So they want to probably not. create a new location. Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. They want to make it so you basically get the get the stats, get the gear, no matter what account you're on. Uh, you don't need to have that gear yourself. Okay, so right? you don't have to you build your account. Yeah, yeah. I, I you would have assume to you your can, account. but yeah, you don't have to build your account for it. Imagine scaling and wow. then all of a sudden you're in a fight. Oh, how awesome that'd be for streaming. Uh, you know, it'll streamline PvPing to a crazy yeah. extent. But like, it, I guess it's worth it because you really need it to be streamlined in order to get enough people to even do the, the whole... Well, you see Last Man Standing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, for example, LMS, right? If it was, let's say... The same idea as LMS, just randomly put somewhere, and then it's like a mini game, right? Let's say yeah. you do the same thing, same idea as LMS is right now, but you make it so it is through all the worlds. So let's you say can assess it right from now, anywhere, right? if you want to play LMS, you can't. You literally cannot find the game, right? Yeah. Uh, let's say you you wanted to play LMS, you would go there, queue up, and then go do your normal RuneScape thing, and then let's say, I don't know, an hour later, there would be 15, 30 people, however many you need, and then you would just go into a fight, right? The yeah, same give you like a notification, like, yeah. oh, you want to join? Okay. Yeah, the same could be obviously differently for the PvP, and then you only need one person, let's say, in your elo, around your elo that you can fight. Or the longer you wait, obviously, the lower opponent you can get, but the less elo you will gain beating him, and the more elo you will lose uh, if he beats you. And That's they're seriously looking into yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, this this might come out, right, for the game? They're seriously um, looking into this? Basically, we were just it? talking about it. I don't know how okay. how serious, how close that is. Um, I mean, but I, mean, I really, I really hope this comes out. Stuff, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like, before they could bring that but out. isn't this crazy, though? We were just talking about this idea, and now it might seriously be considered. Now, I don't think honestly, it from us, I, but it's still yeah. really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. I think oh, they and, spoke and I, about uh, it at RuneFest. Like, I swear Chris Archie brought it up at RuneFest about an ELO system. Am I right in saying mm -hmm. that, Max? I think so. I there was something remember. about it. I can't remember, but I think I'd heard it before. But yeah, I think that would be great. To be honest, what about you, mate? How ba you basically, feel? wait. Yeah. Be before I forget, I want to mention that as well. So they were scared, like scared, quote unquote, about absolutely killing wilderness if they did that, right? Um, oh, that's true. I don't yeah. think I don't think that's the case though, no, because let's say you queue up, you can still go in the wilderness and PK, right? And yeah, when yeah. Your fight is up, fine. You go into a fight, and then you can continue what you were doing beforehand. I don't think it would kill wilderness. I mean. Let's be serious. Wilderness Peking is so boring and dead. Like, I don't know. Hey, man. Man, at least for me, <laughs> it's so uh, impossible to find, find anything interesting. Hey, and man. when you have, yeah, it, it... <laughs> I'm thinking about doing like all of December PVP content. I'm gonna make the wildy great again, dude. <laughs> uh, you need any... <laughs> for you're me. Gonna, you're gonna sit in wildy for two hours and find no one. I just, just, yeah, I'm just like... gonna end up going to rev caves every day, dude. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah, just try mid mech on his uh, yeah, rev yeah, cave. Yeah, if you need adventures. a plus one, dude, I'm all about making the wildy more active. So hit me up, man. I'll be down awesome, to PK. Awesome, man. No, be because like if you stream have a system that is that streamlined, it would make uh just like the whole P PVPing skill set more accessible to more people right because they can good conveniently way be able to practice PvP. i i think the way with how pvp is right now there's one of two things they can do they either need to make it incredibly competitive with the nilo system i think that works or they need to bring something which is incredibly fun one of those and it will be a success uh, but the way the, the way it is system. not very good it's you know it's been out for too yeah. long everybody knows what it's about Mm, you know it gets boring after a while let's look like the the thing with the wilderness is like you know people don't really care so much about ha like kind of just having fun in a sense they kind of want a reason to do something yeah so you, i think hey, a Max, elo system is you, like pretty good sorry Manx, were you smiling at yourself smiling at the camera no i was i was smiling because uh yeah like you're saying the game is so efficiency based that putting like X amount of GP per hour in the wildy just doesn't make it active anymore. You have to yeah. do it so people enjoy doing it. And an ELO system could be a really good way of doing it. Yeah. Because no one's, yeah, no one really cares because they can just go to Borgath for money or something like that, you know? 
I, I um, hope this actually happens because I'd love to get back into PvP, man. Like, and we're gonna I, slap I really our name on there, even if it wasn't us, dude. Fuck it, that's so badass. Oh, I'm I'm hyped about that. Just skilling on yeah, your yeah. Like I, I think I think I think the issue with the wilderness is that I don't think there's a really easy solution to make it super uh like popular besides you know the few hot spots like revs, right? Mm. Just because it, it's just kind of one of those. You know, you just kind of realize that there's really not much you can do for it. It's a it's a delicate situation, you know? You... Yeah, it's very, very think, difficult. Although you can't, like, make money per hour a thing, I think if, like, statuettes dropped again, like, I, like maybe having EP, so every half an hour you get EP, on top of what you currently get, uh, would potentially incentivize people. Because remember back in the day when you'd be PKing, you'd kill a guy in full rune and you'd get an ancient statuette, and you'd be like, oh my god, this is amazing, you know? I yeah, think yeah. that like surprising aspect might make people try it out more because right now like there's not really a reason to go PK. Um, so I think having that surprise factor might help because all PVM stuff, it's it's a boss, you kill it, and you might get a really good item, you might not. Um, and I think having that surprise factor in PKing could help people. Yes, yeah, it, it really it just, works. Yeah, a hundred. It could. It's it, it's a very delicate thing because in the past it was very easily abusable. So Easy. they would have to, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, dragon full helm. So they have crash, to be very man. careful with that. Yeah. Like I, I feel like you know, it's it. I think RuneScape in terms of PvP is at a crossroads. Like you can either do it in a in a wilderness fashion, or you can do it in a regulated, streamlined Elo system fashion, right? And obviously, most games that are stri you know, that are successful, that are striving, like have a striving PvP community, <laughs> is is you know, in in that type of system, Elo system. Because it's all very formal, you know. You, you get your ranks, and then you compete with like people of your rank, and then it get, it it just gets better and better from that point on, right? Yeah, I, I so. said like the Elo system's just a really safe bet, and also like yeah, this was the first time that they actually did an All Star event, and considering that it did incredibly well for like a first time. So you know, after they'd done this three or four times, and they polished it off a little bit, like it this format could very easily turn into something a lot bigger than what it currently is. Like, you know, they wanted to make RuneScape into an eSport. Like we said a few podcasts back, this may be the way to go. And if that were to happen, obviously, instead of having the most popular content creators and they had the best PKers in that tournament, and then obviously they picked those people through the ELO system, like, it all adds up. It all works. Mm. And I, I think that this is the right path. And I think it could literally be amazing. If they and, out right. and I think this could actually promote the wilderness in a way is is because um, obviously a lot of the uh, older players know about the wilderness. They do wilderness all the time. But if you know if, if you're really well known in like the PvP circuit, that would maybe hopefully make make its way to to old school with the Elo system. You could promote the wilderness yourself, right? Like let's say you, you don't want to do some intense PvPing for like your ranks. Instead, you're just like, oh, come through, you know, go to the wilderness with me. Like you kind of bring people along with you and you just kind of you know do your own stuff in the wilderness right because like the wilderness is just to have fun right like you're not there you're not really there for ranks you know you might want to be there to kill somebody for a drop or something because like i feel like if you have the uh, really solid pvp system with the elo you're gonna encourage a lot of people to learn a pk like pvp or pk whatever and you can then kind of redirect them into the wilderness when they are just they just want to do something fun pvp related but not necessarily go for yeah, ranks. Yeah, they'll gain the confidence. They need yeah. to actually go out and try to get their own kills. They're like, oh, I did a couple yeah, fights, yeah. I'm losing, but now I can switch. Yeah, there could, could be some positive. The yeah, there could be some positive spillover effect. Right? It, it sounds amazing. I'd love yeah. if this actually happened, because, like, uh, imagine, like, there was just some random person started doing the ELO system, got into, like, gold, went into the wilderness. Yeah, exactly. He's boasting about being, e like, gold. He's, like, gold 2, by the way. And then someone, <laughs> from, someone from Diamond 2 just comes along and just fucking smashes him. Like, that'd be, like, the greatest thing ever, man. I, I want Imagine when you be, kill yeah. somebody, it shows their ELO, too, like, uh, in the wilderness. Yeah. So you actually Dude. go and it's just, like... You send this guy home and it just has like a little diamond bracket near it. You're like, whoa. They, they could totally right. do that. You they, just defeated a top tier, you know, PvP or whatever. They, you know? Well, That's they, what I'm saying. They can make this so interesting. Like, do you know on our, like, where you can do dance emotes?
emotes and stuff like that. If they had one yeah. which was like uh, Elo tier or whatever, and you clicked it, <laughs> and like an emblem came up with whatever tier you are, like that would be. It's the same with on the. These Legends. are brilliant ideas, man! Yeah, Holy dude. shit, dude! It'd be sick. They could. So like, oh, it's, it's, it tells you, oh, you've been defeated by blah blah blah, and then it tells you the tier. Imagine but getting like, defeated oh, by a bronze five D. Imagine being defeated by an Iron Man. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I think there's there's some awesome. good spell over though. I think I think the Elo system could could only benefit the overall you know PVP aspect of this game. For oh, sure. 100%. Yeah. I'm wondering, Mika and um, Mank, did they talk about during the tournament uh, LMS update at all? No. No. <laughs> no. Not they didn't bring it up. You, you know what they, they were needed. talking about? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. You, you know, with mobile coming out, there's a lot of new kids that definitely play this game, but they originally play mobas. They need to change the name to RuneScape Royale or some shit, Battle Royale. Because like, oh, they, dude, Last Man Standing is just dude. no. It's just like they. You know what I mean? All the kids right. probably like that. Oh, stuff. I thought you meant they rebrand yeah. their whole oh. game. I just no, no, they just rebrand the. the yeah, just call it RuneScape Roy Battle Royale or something. I'd dude. be fine with that. Yeah, I mean, as long as they have a little update. I so then you can spank out the little kids. You know, something. spank out the little every time, man. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, what is this, man? He's cheating, you know. I was like, whatever. It's just kill the fun. kids. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, that'd be like the little kids talking about an update. Yeah, I thought they would be. Well, either way, if they're talking about the Elo, at least something's there, man. And then All Stars went absolutely fantastic. Is there anything they could change to the oh, All yeah. Stars? Do you guys think? Oh, for sure. Um, like first things first, make it shorter. Um, <laughs> Or just expand thing. it for a couple days, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Then okay. definitely, what you need to do is have a computer for every person participating, so everyone can practice as much as they want. Not that you need to constantly be like on the edge, knowing when you will even be able to practice. For example, mm -hmm. um, dude, what else? Fuck, well, I had so many things <laughs> planned, and now they are all. Whatever you know, bad dude. Uh, no, nah, but in general, just like. Yeah, be, be be able to practice and have computers for everyone. That that's the big one for me. Um but yeah. And make it okay. more like make it shorter, make it more day events than just a one day event. Yeah. Yeah, if they spread it out, I think it'd be a ton better. Alright, make you yeah, go. Honestly, man? two day event could be five hours. Yeah, Each. I think two day or three day whatever would be great. Um potentially having like a duos tournament. So like thirty two oh, yeah, size well, duos tournament. Imagine like King. Yeah. <laughs> well, just imagine skill specs and Torvesta. <laughs> you go to like a listening, and Torvesta's like, Jay, what are you doing? Like, it could just be the funniest thing ever. Oh, um, and Dude, that's such a good idea. With that, also just having like more people invited would be sick as well, just to. Um, yeah, Duo all stars like, next. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So instead of like 16 people, it'd be like 32 people or something. Yeah. Or even if it's not duos, do solos all stars, but have invite 32 people. Um, Ooh. If, and, if and make possible. it like three days. Make it like three days yeah. instead. Cause... Make it like a couple of days because I think that would be sick. Because I think they should do all stars with content creators, but they should also do like the best VKs. Because... Yeah, but they need an EDL system for that one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. In the future. But, yeah, because if they if they just focus on the best PKs, I kind of feel bad because content creators have quite a lot of not sway, but like for them, um, yeah, know, influence, like, it, yeah, influence and fans and, and people who follow them, you know. So yeah, it, um, they're it, gonna definitely keep doing. It. They're definitely gonna keep doing it because it's really good marketing exposure. Because yeah. it puts it makes every content games. creator, <laughs> yeah, it makes every content creator try to like tell everybody else. And in turn, when the event finally happens, all of their boys, you know, to watch your favorite, like players, come come together and pit it out, right? So yeah, because yeah, it's really like, easy. Personally, watching a bunch of content creators fighting out, I think that's more enjoyable for me than watching like the best PKs, because you can't really, unless yeah. you get to know the best PKs, you can't really root for anyone. So it probably have to be like a long term project of getting to know the best PKs. But short term, like just watching skill space versus tall best or something. It's just hilarious, you know? So, yeah, no, that's so true. I both. It is so true. Like, here's a question for everybody. Do you think that All Stars would uh, pull in more viewers if it was to be the best PKers in-game or if it were to stay the most popular content I think it would be creator? less. less it would viewers. be less. Less. Definitely less. Yeah. Un until a proper like, ELO system is created and, like, people actually, fi like, 
define the ELO system as legit. Okay. Then, I think the uh, yeah. regular All Stars actually brought about a lot of names because you know Bodie practiced with people on stream. Thousands of people watch this guy slap Bodie's ass like multiple <laughs> times. Obviously, he has fanboys now. Uh, I could say the same for multiple people. Like if you practice make, you probably practice somebody. Now they might know him if you've talked about it yeah, at all. Shout and it kind of creates, like, yeah, yeah, it kind of creates fanboys for these people. It's like, wow, the best of the best trained with the best. That's his name. So it's actually making names uh, for these people. Yeah, like, even at, if you don't think about it. Yeah, as of right now, you're just like you're like best of the best by reputation because there's not there's no standard that the game is deciding. You know, the size yeah. for you to yeah, it's like, just word of mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, there'll be a lot of people that can claim, oh, that's the that's the flaw right now. It's like, there will be a lot of people that claim they're they're the best of the best, but that's only from their perspective. You know, there's no yeah. game. You need you need like a game to decide it, right? Well, the amount of people that have asked me, who do you think would win between you and ten thirteen? It's like, I want an Elo system to come out just so I can do those fights and and do that. I think it'd be sick. Wait, oh, are you yeah. confident about 13? that? Who's that? Ten thirteen's Bodie's Bodie slapper, no, I believe, right? Is... Ditter slapper, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. okay. Man, I need to get a fucking coach, man. I didn't even train. <laughs> I can coach you, dude. I got you, man. Yo, yo. Dude, my coach was, like, from back in 2007. And I remember him teaching me, is like, if you ever splash a barrage, go for the blitz. It always hits. <laughs> 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 I remember him telling me the that. Uh, back in so the, funny. It was back in the day when there was the dangerous clan wars. And I fucking miss those days. Man. Oh, yeah, the high-risk one. Oh, yeah. God. I used to make bank in there, man. They used to get, like... Ab like used to get people coming in with party hats and stuff like oh, the the fucking Lord. yeah people were just stupid they just came in with like bank on them like i've never seen a kind of party at a high risk bounty what the hell that's sick dude yeah, that's crazy saw people claws and evos and stuff because but... people used to learn in those portals and it was yeah like, yeah i remember oh, back yeah. in the day i stopped pk in the wieldy when that came out because it was easier to bank it at uh dangerous clan wars than what it was at like mage bank like way faster and you could get yeah, more like of your 20, stats it. back yeah Righty boys, uh, I think we've covered like pretty much everything, to be honest. Look at this man right here on the screen. Dude, I oh, do have dude. to say, Max, Beauty. congratulations, man. You did fucking Yeah, man, congratulations, brother. You really you. I'm winning you, you did an amazing job. Like, I remember uh, before I was fighting Ditter, I was talking to Skill Specs, and I was saying, if I actually win this fight, what do I do against Max? I was like, he's not lost a fight. Is he like even killable? <laughs> and um you know i really don't know how i would have handled that situation all i know is that if you dd'd on me i'd have been like fight me like a man you pussy like, i would just i spanned that in game pretty much That's what I would have he just stands up from his that would become a legendary meme bro that if, if you actually typed that I would have. That's what I would have typed, honestly. But <laughs> as he dies too, he'd just be dropping. <laughs> I died with honor. <laughs> I just Pussy put bitch. C Y yeah. in the at sign as I'm dropping down. Um, <laughs> all right, that was lovely. Anyways, yo, Mika, Max, both of you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Where can the people find you? What are your social medias? Go, Mika. You go first, mate. Nah, you, you, all right, sure. Um, Twitch.tv slash Mika. YouTube slash Mika. I mean, 279. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And Twitter. Lovely. Um, what about you, Manked? I'm Twitch.tv forward slash Manked and Twitter.com forward slash Manked Up Mage, I think. Manked Up Mage. Uh, my I my YouTube, people. I don't really upload right now, but YouTube.com forward slash Manked Up Mage. Awesome. While well, you guys heard it, the links will be down in the description. If you haven't followed these guys, make sure you go and do so. Both of them participated in the All-Stars tourney, and they're both absolutely phenomenal PKers. So make sure you guys go and follow them. Love you. Goodbye. Oh, Buy a Majed t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>